Hello, welcome to the Liverpool Day Trip is a women's show. I'm your host, Chris Brack, and today I'm joined by Liverpool striker Katie Stenjard. Katie, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent, thank you. So, so for those who don't know, Katie joined us in January um, from a uh, team in Norway, wasn't it, you were playing for? Is that correct? Yeah, I was most recently playing for Valeringa in Oslo. Oh. That's fine. I can't pronounce. That's why I had to say it to you in Norway. I, <laughs> I have to admit, my pronunciation is not very good. Yeah, and then since you joined us, you just can't stop scoring, really, can you? Do it's going really, really well. I didn't score this past Sunday, so that's all that matters, right? <laughs> oh well, the big we still got the win. That was the main thing. So, but how how things how, how you settling in into Liverpool and all go all going well? Yeah, um, got settled here, living uh, Liverpool Central, and absolutely love it. I get to walk around these gorgeous cathedrals and stuff every day. And then like, I have, I think six coffee shops all within walking distance. So I'm happy off the field. Fantastic on the field. The girls have been great. It's been such an easy transition uh, since they're so friendly and welcoming on the field. And you know, uh, the fact that they keep winning is kind of nice too. So. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a nice habit to get into. So, uh, so far, what would you say has been your favorite goal since you've joined Liverpool? Uh, the first one, <laughs> just because sometimes you get stuck in a rut and you just don't get one. And then it's like, once you get the first one, it's like, okay, I can breathe. I'm here. We're good. Move on. Yeah, it wasn't it? Uh, I think a lot of us celebrated that 85th eight, minute win. We can't, can't go wrong with that, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how are we all feeling after uh, Charleston game? Because, I mean, to be fair, Charleston really worked Liverpool. And it was um, a very late winner by uh, Jazz Matthews. But that, that was a tough game. I mean, it was the real rate. We haven't played Charleston all season because of the uh, fixtures being rearranged. Yeah, I think, I mean, we, going into the game, we knew uh, they're one of the strongest sides we'll face all season. And they certainly were. They put us to the test and exploited us in a couple areas that hopefully we can fix this coming weekend again. But um, no, I think the game was really exciting. I think uh, there's some things we want to sharpen up on uh, come this Sunday, but it was a good test for us. And yeah, we're very lucky to have that amazing game winner excellent excellent so let's just talk about your career because i mean you've you've played in a new, numerous countries you know you've obviously mm. started out in america you were uh, played for Bayern munich in germany uh you've played for a few teams in Austri australia and mm. we've been to norway so sort of talk about the journey sort of what got got you into football because uh, i know in america it's it's a, a very much a, a college system which is a, it's a really good way of actually getting education mm. and getting you into professional sports yeah, I think uh, growing up, I was dragged along to my dad's uh, old men's league games. So they would, you know, typical Sunday league stuff, bring the case of beer and everyone's hanging out. And then kids get dragged along and someone gets a babysit them all while the old guy kick a ball around. But uh, so he was my first coach. My sister and I both played. So she was my training partner for years and um, played in college at Wake Forest, North Carolina. And then once I graduated, I was like, I need to get in a new environment. I wanted to challenge myself. So I went straight over to Bayern, played there for a little bit, and then came back to the U.S. And the U.S. system is interesting. You really have no say whether you want to stay or go. The club has uh, full reign. So I was traded several times in the off seasons, uh, once during a season, and you basically just like pack up your stuff and move. So I have been to several different clubs. I've gotten to play with a lot of different players. Um, and then every off season, since in the US they have about a three to four months off, off season, I'd go to Australia and play in their uh, W League. So it was really good. Um, got to see the world, get to you know meet all kinds of new people, but have been to many different clubs. And so it's nice. I signed my longest contract here and it's nice to have a home and when we go away for you know the off season i get to know that i'm coming back here next season mm -hmm. i know that where i'm gonna be i don't need to like pack up all my stuff and just be ready to move to the next place so uh it's been a whirlwind um but i've been lucky enough to play in a lot of different places yeah because in america it's a it's a draft system isn't it which probably probably where people are like nfl fans would associate that more with because is that part of the reason you, you decided to go to uh, buy in to avoid the draft system a little bit, just to get you a bit more settled and uh, get a couple of years in the same club? Yeah, my uh, senior year at Wake didn't really pan out as well. I got blood clots, and so I ended up having to miss the second half of my senior season. Um, and so I didn't feel like I 
did enough really. Um, I didn't know how I would do in the draft. So I also knew that like I needed to take the chance and get into a different system, try to find a, a team that wasn't just, you know, the typical college draft NWSL system in the US. Um, I really wanted to challenge myself and learn from another culture. And like we, I feel like in the US, only know the US. And so it was nice to have an opportunity to present itself to go and play in a whole different arena um, and learn that there's so many other leagues out there. So yeah, I decided to pursue uh, Germany and go over there and challenge myself there because. I knew I could eventually come back to the U S and I would, but, um, I thought, you know, this was the time and the opportunity was there. Cool. In terms of sort of playing styles, um, is them, is it vastly different, say Germany, Australia to America? Cause, uh, I think Kerry Holland, when I spoke about said it's very, a bit more athletic, the American style, uh, of football. So it's, it's Possibly, I don't know. It's slightly different in Europe. Europe's a little bit more technical, but not as not as athletic and as dominant. Um, is that a fair comment? Or is because obviously different players have different experiences depending which leagues they're in. I think it also it, it's different because in the U.S. now, when you have all these internationals, like everyone has their own type of playing style. And I think maybe twenty years ago, yeah, I think the U.S. were known to be this like not just athletic, but like mentally, they knew they were going to be the most fit team no matter what that was the one thing they could control so they you know relied on that um fitness level um whereas now i feel like we know that can't just like carry us the whole way so i think there's so many girls in the u.s who are very technical very crafty you know tactically intelligent and i do think over here it's a lot uh slower pace in order to actually facilitate a lot more of the technical bit or tactical bit sorry Mm -hmm. um but no, I think it's very similar um, playing styles, players in general, because it's hard to generalize like, oh, yeah, yeah. American plays like this. Um, so I have noticed like, yeah, little things. Um, I think the only real difference I can point out is the fields. I think over here, they're a lot softer. Uh, so you have to wear studs, whereas in the US, most are hard surfaces and so no one even knows what a stud is. Like everyone wears mm. mold and it's just like v- much more common. Um, so maybe that changes the way people play, but no, I honestly feel like there's so much growth in all the different areas that a lot of players are very technical, very fit and very tactically oriented. Awesome. Awesome. So how did the, uh, the move for Liverpool come about then? Um, was it quite a whirlwind transfer or was it, did you think we sort of aware of it for a little while? Um, I mean, I had always wanted to come over and play in the UK, but it was very tough to get a visa. Uh, You need to qualify with a certain number of points. And in order to get points, you need to play Champions League. You need to play a certain number of minutes for your club. But then it used to only be like you had to have so many caps for your national team. And with the US being so big, I really like, I don't have any caps with my national team. Uh, So I never thought it was gonna be a possibility. So then when Matt, randomly like had reached out about oh you know they changed the visa process and i was like wait i wonder if i would qualify because you know in norway we play champions league so Mm. it was still up in the air i had no idea if we'd actually get approved or not and we went through a long visa process and then had to get my points and everything approved for months uh but when it finally went through i was like okay here we go the opportunity is finally here Cool, cool. I mean, listen, you've I mean, you've settled in brilliantly for us, and it, it helps because it, it, it also takes some pressure off um, Leanne Kiernan, you know, who had a brilliant start to the season. I mean, she still played very well now, like, but it is nice the fact that there is a bit of pressure to take it off, take it off now. It gives us all different options as well, and hopefully, all going well, we're going to have the challenge of the uh, WSL next year. That's the uh, the big hope for Liverpool, and you know, we're not too far away now. Fingers fingers crossed. So, just to get get to know you a bit better, people. Who, People who don't know Katie, you need to follow her on Twitter because she's hilarious on Twitter. A Twitter game is really funny. Um, um, I quite I quite enjoy it. It does make me it does make me smile. But it's good to see that kind of personality. You know, a bit bit more fun about it. I mean, I have seen on Liverpool TV your biggest bugbear is having to rebuy an appliance every time you move. And I mean, to be fair, you've had a few few moves now. So 
Are, are you all sorted now, or is there still? Are you still ram raiding B and M and Primark? Oh, I go there just for fun now, but I don't really <laughs> use it at the moment. Uh, <laughs> I can just like spend hours. I finally found a really big one. Uh, there was a B and M and a Home Bargains, yep. and they were massive. It's like the first time I've actually seen one that's like American sized. So I feel like I walk around. I walked around for like twenty minutes and did my like evening stroll in the store, and I had no problem with it. It was great. Um, <laughs> but no. Uh, the most annoying thing about traveling is having to pack two suitcases and that's all you really get to bring. Um, so having to rebuy the vacuum is infuriating because I want a good one because I'm a clean freak and I clean my floors at least every other day, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on it because I have to do it so often. So <laughs> that's always a tough one. And hangers to hang my clothes. Ugh, I don't know how I don't bring them many items but somehow i've accumulated so many shirts that i'm just like all right time to go back to primark <laughs> so you know your favorite shop i love that place it's great <laughs> cool so getting to know obviously you've got to know your teammates pretty well now since we and jan we ask all the players this so who would you say is the biggest joker that you've got you've got in the team uh probably ash ash also her, her uh, name is come up quite regularly yeah I think she's just like so goofy. I can't, I don't think we've ever had like a real serious conversation because it's always just like, what are you doing? You're so goofy, but she's a clown. Yeah. Uh, who who would you say is the most skillful? As I know it's always a debate. Ooh, skillful. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Maybe Mel Lolly. She's very crafty dribbler. Yeah, I must admit, I think of the four players that I've been looking up to interview, that that is the one name that keeps cropping up all the time is is Mel. I mean, she's hopefully we'll get her interview at some point. But yeah, she's uh, she just likes to glide past players. Mm -hmm. So for people who haven't seen you play, which you know we're hoping you know we're going to get more people to come and see you play because we've got a game on Sunday against Charlton. How would stylistically, how would you describe yourself? What type of striker would you describe yourself as? Just uh, I think I'm idea. really good. Back to goal, love being the ball to my feet, um, love being able to turn. I think I'm a efficient finisher um, and just love to get on the ball and combine. And I like more of a possession oriented game and, and just like to link up with players and actually keep the ball and get it moving. And um, would love to like, you know, find myself in all the right pockets and right spaces to make sure I can finish. <laughs> Cool. Uh, we, for those who didn't see, um, you did get a, a hard introduction to in English football with um, Crystal Palace, where I believe okay. um, the goalkeeper decided to let her shoulder see, see you see your face, which was some wacky talk of her, to be fair. Uh, all, all better now, I'm assuming everything okay, but that was a nice introduction to welcome to the championship, wasn't it? Yeah, this uh, league is a lot more physical. Um, <laughs> In like almost like a I don't care I'm gonna go through you type of way, and I had no business going for that header, but I was like, oh, this is where I'm gonna score. It's gonna happen. And then next thing I know, I didn't score, didn't touch the ball, instead I just got full face right to the cheek. So that was nice. Yeah. So go back to the the season. Um, we've had we've played two games. Get we've had a few games against W WSL sides. We played Tottenham in the Conti Cup, and we recently uh, were eliminated from the FA Cup with Arsenal. Um, from a team's perspective, while the result wasn't what we wanted, has that given us an idea of what we want to tweak, where we want to go? Because there were times in that Arsenal game, uh, on the break, we were causing them their trouble. They were just, on the day, very, very clinical, which I means Arsenal are top of the WSL. So, you know, it, it was always going to be a tough tie. But has that sort of inspired the players for what, what we're going to hopefully be next season? Yeah. I mean, I think that game presented a, a chance for us to prove ourselves against one of the best teams in the world, not just the WSL. Um, and yeah, they had a few worldies, but I think there were times when we actually put them under pressure and we mm. proved that, you know, yeah, we can play with them and we should. And I think on the day we had nothing to lose, but, you know, ideally next year, those would be teams that we compete with, you know, week in and week out. And I think we have the, core group and we can do that and i think now it's just a matter of like continuing to build that confidence and build that you know just quicker playing style cool cool and with now restrictions being lifted in the uk um 
it is good now that uh, fans are now actually able to meet up with players after games now, start to do selfies and all that. Is that a big thing that the players have been looking forward to? Because uh, it was obviously pre-COVID a, bi- a big feature. Yeah, I mean, I think COVID just made the whole world kind of be weird. You yeah. didn't want to be near anybody. And so anytime I'd like walk in anywhere, I was like, okay, you're getting a little too close. I don't want to breathe your air. But now it's like, oh, we can actually talk to the fans and we can interact. And it's not just, oh, thanks for coming to watch and wave to you from afar. So it's a lot nicer to have that kind of, you know, relationship and get to interact with the fans more um, as long as everyone's healthy. Yeah, good, good, good. So fingers crossed, pr- promotion Promotion we're hoping is, is um, going to go well. So for people who are going to come down on Sunday, you know, what should they expect from Charleston? Because uh, we beat them 1-0 last weekend but um they really work us don't they and then i think after charlton it's a uh, durham who are uh, normally a, a very very tricky side to play yeah i mean we have a few really big games coming up and i think if we want to earn promotion we need to you know cash in against these strong opponents it's not going to be just like a given to us so mm. i think um you'll see a fight this Sunday. They're very scrappy and they're also very like, you know, they like to combine, they like to create chances and they were dangerous and they definitely got in behind us a few times. And I think um, we're looking to come out and be a very organized, hard to break down team and then, you know, create our own chances. And hopefully we can actually play against a team that comes at us and doesn't just sit in and it'll be an exciting game of soccer where football, sorry, where it goes back and forth. (laughs) So I think it'll be a very exciting game. I think uh, like both teams have a lot to prove and a lot to play for. So um, I think it'll be a big one. Good, good. And we've seen this season uh, the benefit of the squad because uh, at the moment we've got uh, Leanne Robes, uh, sadly, is out injured at the moment. But Jazz Matthews has stepped back in from injury and stepped up. And the good news is, I believe, is Rihanna Dean back in training, mm-hmm. which, is nice to, which is nice to see because, unfortunately, we haven't seen enough of Rihanna thought she's just been very unlucky with a, a foot injury mm-hmm. so final question for you obviously you've been in the UK for a little while now um is there any sort of um UK slang that you still find odd or any sort of UK delicacies that you go in I don't know what that is mm-hmm. uh yeah basically anytime Matt talks I have no clue what he's saying he just talks <laughs> and it's like what do you say something about like a Gregory and somehow that meant in someone's neck and I'm I just sit there and I'm like Surely he's making this up, but everyone understands it. So clearly there's some kind of like weird little slang dictionary everyone else learns here. And I just am not there. Um, <laughs> let's see. I still haven't had like scouse or like a proper like Sunday roast. I've heard that's oh, a big thing. Uh, I recently got on the beans and toast thing. And I used to think that's very weird. <laughs> but like actually it kind of grew on me. And like it doesn't quite replace avo toast with a little poached egg, but like, you know, I could work with it. Um, and then recently tried some like weird Irish, the whole bangers and mash thing just really confuses me. And like the little pea mush thing that is oh, not peas. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just, <laughs> no. it doesn't sound appetizing. Mushy, anything just, but it's a delicacy, I guess. And I swore it was guacamole. So I was excited. And then it, no, it wasn't. Oh yeah. The, the, the very different. Yeah. 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 Oh, we'll have to get, we'll have to get the club to sort you out some scouts though. Because you know yeah. that's a staple diet. You've got to try that at least once. Yeah, at least once. Good, good, good. Right, listen, Katie. It, thank you very much for your time. It is much appreciated. So, listen, um, for anybody who's watching, please like, please subscribe, and if you can, if you are available on Sunday, please come and uh, watch uh, Liverpool Women do the race for promotion against Charleston. Uh, it is two o'clock kickoff. Uh, mm-hmm. Tickets are still available. Just book them online uh, and have some fun. And until then, though, guys, Katie, thank you very much for joining us and guys we will speak to you soon thanks thanks for having me